right, everybody. All right, Zane from Really Easy AI, and it is time for part nine, the final part of fine tuning. Um, let's go ahead and jump into it. Uh, originally, I had entitled this Practical Examples with an S, uh, but each of the examples looked like it was going to be super duper long, so I decided to do Practical Example and then leave you guys to run with it and ask questions if you want. We can look at some other stuff. But I think this will cover off on um, a good, solid uh, uh, foothold for you to get going for uh, doing fine-tuning. I think we've covered a lot already, so you should be in pretty good shape. With that said, I do want to give you a practical example that I thought uh, had merit. Uh, here it is. <laughs> it's an older one, so I had to convert it and do some other junk. But uh, fine-tuning ChatGPT for sentiment analysis. Uh, using weights and biases data as well. So we kind of do a little bit of everything. It's it's an older one, so they do some manual stuff, and we do we do that and log the manual stuff in WMB, and then we do our own automated stuff that we've been doing in WMB as well. So a little bit of everything going on here, um, and I think you'll enjoy this. We do get a significant accuracy boost. I go ahead and use the uh, GPT-35 Turbo model for this, just like they did in the original but other than that, most of the code uh, has changed quite a bit to allow for, you know, the deltas because obviously the API has changed in a little, uh, quite a bit since then. So I'm going to give you the full code. It is its separate. Um, uh, it is a separate uh, notebook, uh, and away we go. So before we get going, though, let me remind you because we're about to jump off a cliff here. Uh, let me remind you to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, hit that like button. It helps the channel so much. If you like my content, I really would appreciate it. Uh, hit that subscribe button too. It's just a click, a couple of clicks, and you can really help the channel go a long way. And if you like the content, that's great. If you don't like the content, let me know. Let me know what I can do to make it better for you. Um, with that said, uh, give, me, uh, give me some comments. I love the comments. I'd love to see them. If you really, really like the content, consider becoming a member. We have two levels, Artificial Narrow Intelligence, level one, $1.99 a month. You get the loyalty badges, you get the emojis, you get the discounted merchandise, of which we only have one thing, a koozie right now. Um, and then uh, Artificial General Intelligence, level two, lots of good stuff. I'm about to pick up some of the uh, interaction with the, the members in uh, level two a little bit as well. Uh, priority reply to comments. Uh, I reply to all the comments right now anyway. Members only polls. I'm going to be doing a lot of that going forward. Member shout outs, photos and status updates, and early access to new videos. So we're going to be doing a whole lot of that stuff. Um, the main reason my level two members join is early access to new videos, by the way. Uh, I, I do a lot of these videos in batches, typically over a weekend. And I'll create a whole series over a weekend, and my level two folks don't want to wait, so they'll just become level two members, four ninety nine a month, and boom, Bob's your uncle. Love to have you with either one, uh, definitely. Oh, I forgot to mention, at either membership level, you automatically get access to my enterprise track, where we go over enterprise level stuff. So that would be your Google, your um, Azure, and your Amazon. <clears throat> right now, we're going through Google Vertex, and uh, we're about to pick that back up uh, as well. So there's a, there's several videos that are going through it, and we're going through the advanced Vertex stuff right now, but we go through the beginning and the advanced and get you through all the different Google Labs, and all kinds of fun stuff there. So love to have you. All right, one last thing. Make sure to check out my uh, news channel. Every morning uh, I get up because uh, I can't sleep and uh, go ahead and do some news. You can find it at youtube.com at AI News Fresh. Uh, daily fresh news for you. Hopefully you enjoy that. Definitely subscribe there. You can use the love. Uh, and that is that. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into this thing and see what we got. Okay, so uh, here's the article that I was talking about, fine-tuning ChatGPT for sentiment analysis with WB. This was created back in October 10th of last year um, and last updated November 22nd of last year. Uh, that's 2023, by the way. So it's got three stars. It's a good article. I like it. I don't know why people aren't giving it a higher star rating, uh, and I have updated the code. So this is what we're going to be looking at today. looks like a good ar article by this gentleman, uh, Mustafa Ibrahim. So let's go ahead and begin. And so here we go. I've, I've created a, uh, each one of these practical examples will have their own um, uh, Jupyter notebook to kind of separate them out from the, the earlier stuff we did and make it easier for you to do it, plus to make them all self-contained. 
So here we are. We've got the fine-tuning job, uh, and I have, uh, just to walk you through it, this notebook explores fine-tuning. Um, using weights and biases, our experiment will lead to an overall accuracy boost, and we'll delve into applications. Blah, blah, blah. Gets into what we're going to do. Um, uh, in today's data-driven world, sentiment, anal sentiment analysis plays a pivotal role in discerning public opinion on a myriad of topics. Advanced models like GPT models uh, built on the GPT architecture offer immense potential in understanding and interpreting human emotions from textual data. However, like many tools, their out-of-the-box capabilities might not capture the nuanced intricacies of sentiment, especially in diverse data sets like those from Reddit. This article dives deep into the process of fine-tuning GPT models for sentiment analysis, utilizing the powerful features of the Weights and Biases platform, and delves into the improvements and challenges faced. So some of the things that we're going to have, the TOC is not exactly right. I've changed a few things, but it's roughly this. I just took the TOC from the original, uh, and we'll be headed, uh, we'll be following the steps and all that. The key is really in the step-by-step -step pieces. So let's go ahead then and uh, jump into it real quick. Uh, what I've done is I've already downloaded the Reddit data. It is here, uh, Reddit underscore data CSV. All the practical examples uh, data will be in a special folder away from artifacts that we used for uh, the main stuff in a folder called practical underscore data just to make it easier. So here's the Reddit data that we have for sentiment analysis. I'm going to go ahead and get this out of the way so we can get a little more real estate. Uh, so how can GPT model be used for sentiment analysis? Well, GPT model's ability to understand natural language makes it a good fit. This is because unlike traditional chatbots that, that rely on predefined responses, GPT models generate real-time answers based on a vast amount of training data. It enables to provide responses that are contextually relevant and informed by a broad spectrum of information. Fine-tuning. We know what fine-tuning is, but here you can see fine-tuning is a pivotal step in adapting a general-purpose model, like the GPT models, to a specific task such as sentiment analysis. A GPT model with its broad language understanding capabilities can grasp a vast array of topics. However, sentiment analysis is more than just comprehending text. It requires a nuanced understanding of the subjective tones, moods, and emotions. Think about sarcasm, which we did. Remember we did more of the sarcastic uh, chatbot? Understanding sarcasm is tricky, even for humans sometimes. Sarcasm is when we say something but mean the opposite, often in a joking or mocking way. For example, if it starts raining just as you're about to go outside and you say, oh, perfect timing, you're probably being sarcastic because it's actually bad timing. Now imagine a machine trying to understand this. Without special training, it might think you're genuinely happy about the rain because you said perfect. This is where fine-tuning a model like Chat, uh, GPT comes in uh, becomes crucial. The GPD model out of the box is pretty good at understanding a lot of text. It's read more than most humans ever will, but sarcasm is subtle and often needs context. So to make GPT models really get sarcasm, we'd expose it to many examples of sarcastic sentences until it starts catching on to the patterns. But here's the catch. Sarcasm doesn't look the same everywhere. In different cultures or situations, what's sarcastic in one place might be meant seriously in another. That's why just general knowledge isn't enough. The model needs specific examples to truly get grasp the playful twists and turns of sarcasm. In short, to make GPT models understand sarcasm like a human, it needs extra training on it. Just like someone might need to watch several comedy shows to start understanding a comedian's sense of humor. All right, so data preparation and labeling. The current data set at hand. Uh, in this notebook, we're going to leverage the Reddit data sets, uh, data sets sourced from Kaggle. I include the link here. This data set features two key columns, clean comments, the sentiment text uh, cleaned up, and its corresponding category or sentiment label. So let's take a look at that real quick. I want you guys to see it. Go to practical data, Reddit. Um, basically, it breaks it down into two things, clean comment and category. So clean comment in this case, you can kind of see it here. Let's see if I can. Uh, family uh, Mormon have never tried uh, never try to explain them. They still stare puzzled from time to time, like uh, some kind of strange creature. Nonetheless, they have come to admire patience, confidence, equanimity, acceptance, and compassion. Uh, have developed all the things Buddhism teaches. So, and then there's a sentiment score associated with that. Is it positive? Is it neutral? Or is it negative? And I believe the score values are one for positive. 
uh, 0 for neutral and minus 1 for a negative if memory serves. There's a minus 1. I'm not sure how many neutrals we have in here. But there you go. So you can be you know, positive is 1, minus 1. Yep, there's our 0 right there, neutral. So you basically have three values, right? Positive, neutral, or negative, which is classic for sentiment analysis. All right, so the file contains 37,000 comments along with its sentimental labeling. All the comments in the data set are cleaned and assigned with a sentiment label. So we've been given this labeled data, as we call it, right? This is what we mean when we say we're giving it labeled data. We've cleaned it. We've labeled it. We're, we're, when we're getting ready to train, we give it labeled data so it can learn from it. And then with the idea that we'll give it unlabeled data later on and it'll figure out what it is. Um, uh, these these uh, data sets can be used to build a sentimental analysis machine learning model. It's important to note that the refined uh, fine-tuning GPT model processes a process mandates a specific data structure in the form of a JSON-L file for optimal training. What is a JSON-L file? So we haven't really talked about this, so I think we're going to go ahead and use this time to do it. I've included it here. A JSON-L file, short for JSON lines, that's what it means, that's what the L is, um, is a file format, it's really JSON, but I, I just say JSON, uh, is a file format used to store structured data, typically for machine learning and data processing applications. Each line in a JSON-L file is a separate, self-contained JSON object. This makes it particularly useful for handling large data sets that can be processed line by line, avoiding loading everything into memory at once. That's why we have them. Key features of the JSON-L format, one JSON object per line, line delimited, the objects are separated by new lines, not by commas or brackets, efficient parsing, line by line processing is easy because everything's on a single line. Remember that, no root structure. Unlike regular JSON, there is no outer array or object enclosing the entire data set. Each line is completely self-contained. Here's the example, you've seen this many times already of a JSON-L file. Here we have messages, colon, and then we do uh, a nice array here, roles, system, content, Marv is a factual chatbot. This is also sarcastic. Comma, role, user, content, was the capital of France. Role, assistant, content, Paris, as if anyone doesn't know that already. So by now you should be very familiar with the JSON L you know, lines that you've seen. Here we're just explaining it a little more. All right, common use cases for this. Using these files, training data for machine learning models, frequently used in natural language processing tasks where each line contains an individual record, right? A sentence with a label. Log data storage. Each log entry is a separate JSON object. We're not doing that, of course. We're doing the first one. And streaming data processing, ideal for scenarios where you process data. So JSON-L is more than just training machine learning, but that's what we're going to do it for, use it for. How to work with it, reading and writing. In Python, you can use the JSON or JSON lines, lines library to read and write JSON-L files. Many tools like JQ, Pandas, and other data processing libraries support the JSON-L format. It is a very popular format, particularly amongst data scientists. The importance of high quality training data for sentiment analysis. This is important. High quality training data is pivotal for sentiment analysis as it ensures the model learns to accurately distinguish nuances in emotion. Poor data can lead to misrepresentations, reducing the effectiveness of analysis. Moreover, comprehensive and well-curated data can significantly boost the model's ability to generalize across diverse real-world scenarios. The data set we're utilizing underscores this point, as even some of its entries are so nuanced that even humans might struggle to discern their sentiment. So we have 37,000 examples of sentiment that have been properly labeled the way we want them, and we're going to use that to train the model so it understands the nuances of sentiment. Or at least positive, neutral, and negative. All right, time for the step-by-step -step tutorial. This is where we start getting into the weeds and start cranking some code. So first things first, evaluating the old model's performance. Well, the old model is the un, uh, uh, untuned model. Maybe I should change that. Evaluating the uh, uh, normal model's response, maybe. Uh, before it's fine-tuned? Is that a, maybe a better approach? 
So we're going to install and import the necessary packages. If you don't have OpenAI and WANB installed, those packages, you will need to install them. I have them installed, so I've just got this commented out. Obviously, you would uncomment this and run it if you needed to. By now, you should have both if you've been following my course. Second set of items, then. I'll go ahead and run this just for giggles, right? Nothing's going to happen. It's all commented out. Second set is our standard libraries. You can see we've got the standard and the third party separated out. That's how we, it's PEP8 compliant. PEP8 is a standard we use in Python to organize our code. So we're going to run that. And I may make changes as we go along to make some little cleanup here as we go along. Um, all right. Next order of business is we create our client. So I create a client. And we've done this a million times before. Now, strictly speaking, you don't actually have to create the client. I like creating the client because it gives me a variable I can work with. It's easy to understand. And it automatically sucks out the API key. So everything's all set up and ready for me to rock and roll. Um, technically, I could just grab the API key and use the OpenAI library directly. I just don't do that. I haven't done it. Um, and I'm not going to start today. All right, loading and processing the sentiment analysis data set. So we have all this data right here, 37,000 examples. And what we're going to do is we're going to load it up, make sure we can put it into a pandas data frame. We're going to get rid of any missing values. So if there's any uh, drop in A means if there's any missing values anywhere, drop the whole row. So we've got 37 examples. Um, and we're going to wind up with something less than that, most likely, X number of rows after that. I think we'll go ahead and, and do, uh, actually, you know what, let me add code for that real quick. Okay, I just added a little extra code so we can uh, see the total number of rows pre and post cleaning. I thought that would be cool for you. And then I just print out the first 10 rows. I don't even think we need 10 rows. We could probably just print out like the first, like let's print out the first five. All right, let me change my comments here. First five. All right, let's do it. Boom. Away we go. So the data frame has 37,249 rows before cleaning. And it has 37,149. It looks like we dropped 100 rows after cleaning. And then we get this. Clean comment and category. Probably could use a little bit of space after that. I'll just add that in. Uh, here, probably at the end of this is fine. Should be fine. There we go. So now when we run it, it will... Uh, It'll go ahead and update and add a little extra space. I'm not going to bother running it again. You get the idea. So we see the comment, we see the category, and it runs around. Okay. All right, moving on. So now that we've got an idea of how many uh, sets of data we're dealing with, so we're dealing with 37,149 rows of data. Now what we're going to do is initialize a new weights and biases project. So we're going to create a new WD project with code. Last time, and every time we've done it up to now, We've done it uh, through the interface. Now we're going to do it with code to show you how to do it with code. So I'll set an environment variable to tell us which um, uh, notebook we're using. And then I'll initialize the weights and biases run. Now all this you can learn about through the weights and biases website. Like I said, I'm probably going to wind up doing a special ser series just on using WMB. But for now, just trust me with this code. We're going to create a new project called Reddit Sentiment Analysis. Actually, I should probably call it Reddit Sentiment Analysis V2 in my case, because otherwise I've got a lot of uh, muddy data there. So I'm going to call it Reddit Sentiment Analysis Fine Tuning, maybe. Okay. Sure. Hang on. I like that fine tuning. I don't need all that other stuff, but there we go. Okay. So create a new uh, project called Reddit Sentiment Analysis Fine Tuning. Um, now, I do include the code you're going to need to finish at the end. And this code actually is at the end when we're done. I just included here as a reminder to remind you that you do need to end it when it's over. If you turn this on and it starts logging and doing all kinds of crazy stuff and forget to turn it off, you are not going to be happy because there are some diagnostic logs that just keep going and going and going. So you need to remember to finish your job. All right, we're going to go ahead and run this, get everything all configured, and you'll notice we get some very interesting uh, output. So here it goes, currently logged in as Suspicious Cow in my case. All right. And then, so I'd already logged in. You may need to log in uh, if it's your first time using it, so just be aware of that. I'd already logged in. Uh, don't sweat it. If it needs you to log in, it'll say log in. You'll go and log in to your weights and biases website, and then it'll uh, understand that and then away we go 
All right. Um, here we go. It's tracking run. Uh, Wanby version 0.177. Run data is saved locally. Now, by the way, it is saving it locally. See here, it created a, a wand, uh, Wanby folder. And then it's got files, logs, all kinds of stuff. This is what I was telling you about. It is logging. It is active. It is live. Uh, now, I'll delete that before I you know, actually give you guys the code for this. But understand it's doing that. It even gives the run a name, Elated Cosmos, because we didn't give the run a name, which is fine. I don't mind that. Um, you can view your project at and actually click on this link, and it will take you there. Let's go ahead and give it a shot real quick. There's nothing there right now, so let me uh, let me go ahead and just get this configured here. Here it comes. So there we go. Let me just resize that. So there's no data yet, no metrics logged yet. So all we've got is a, a run ready to go, which is fine. We'll come back to that. Okay. Um, so once we actually do a run, we'll see that in action. Now, next step, take a sample to test the model. So we're not going to take all 37,000 of them. We're just going to do a sample of 100 just to see, uh, just to get some uh, metrics. So we're going to do a quick sample. And then we define some helper functions to convert model responses to sentiment value and vice versa. So remember in the data, just to remind you, in the data, we have the original data, we have um, some text and then a, a numeric value for sentiment, right? Um, what we want to be able to do is convert this to a text value like positive, neutral, or negative. And because the um, uh, we're going to change up and use that to train the uh, large language model, right, to fine tune. And then when it gives us output, it's also going to give us output by saying positive, neutral, or negative. And then we need to convert that back to numbers later on when we want to do more analysis with it. So all that's what comes into play here. You're going to see it all take place. But I wanted to explain what's going on. So we got our samples. We've got our helper functions here that convert a response to sentiment and then convert numeric to string sentiment. That's the big one, right? So one is positive, minus one is negative, neutral is zero, and then else it's unknown. All right. Uh, and by the way, uh, so uh, here you can see uh, converted text response to a numeric value, right? So this converts it back to numeric. If it's positive, return one, negative, return minus one, neutral, return zero. So we've got it both ways, right? It'll go... It'll either take a number and convert it to a word or take a word and convert it to a number as needed. All right, I'll go ahead and run that. Now, evaluating the current model performance. Now, we're going to go ahead and do it the way the article does it, manually doing it, and then we'll log it the way the article suggests because that's how we're going to do it. But we'll also do the deeper WMB integration later on to show you kind of the differential. So I'm going to do it manually. This is excruciatingly manual, but it'll get the job done. We'll initialize some counters. Uh, we'll go ahead and iterate over each row and then have the model give us an answer. So I'm actually using the GPT-35 Turbo model in this case because I wanted to use a lower grade model just for this example because the effect of fine tuning is more dramatic. Uh, and that's literally what they're using in the, uh, in the article. So I thought it'd be fine to keep with that. So here we do a chat completions create. We're using 3.5 Turbo. We say, system, what is the sentiment of the following text? Please respond with positive, negative, or neutral. Uh, and then we get a user and we give it the text. We grab a response back and then we convert the text response to a numeric sentiment and we store the results in a file. Uh, we actually label it. We check if the prediction matches the actual sentiment, which is always important. And then we print the progress. So this is going to go through all 100 of our samples and make sure that everything's good and actually do a prediction on sentiment and then compare it to the actual sentiment. So it's going to you know, run it through, get a prediction, um, you know, and then, and then do a prediction and then compare it to what it should be, what we actually know it is. Um, and get a percent in terms of the ability to correctly predict it. So I'm going to let this run. I'm going to pause until it's done, although it's trucking along pretty good. And we'll come back after it's done all 100 samples. Okay, all done. Didn't, didn't take very long at all. All right, so we've got all 100 samples. Uh, we've got our data. Now we can begin calculating the accuracy. 
Uh, we just have some code, does a little division, multiplies by 100, gives us our percent accuracy. And our percent accuracy, just using the out-of-the-box GPT-35 Turbo model, is about 42%. So we got about 42% accuracy out of the box. Now, we're going to go ahead and take the extra step of logging this accuracy to our run. So we're actually going to do wanb log, give the, give the thing a name. We call it old accuracy. And then print the accuracy to our console one more time. So model accuracy before fine-tuning. And now it's time to fine-tune. This is something we've done a gajillion times at this point. So now what we're going to do is we're going to have an output file name to create our JSON-L file uh, that we're going to get back. We're going to convert the data frame to a desired. So first things first. So before we begin fine-tuning, we've got to convert the data frame to a JSON-L format. So we come up with a file name, Reddit Sentiment Data, JSON-L. We convert the data frame to the desired format. I have some code here that literally iterates over it finds the uh, numeric sentiment and converts it to a string as needed, creates a dictionary representing the conversion format, and then writes each data point to a separate line in the JSON-L file. So it puts it in our output and we get our output file name. So we'll let that run. Someone's at your front door. Uh-oh, someone's at my front door. I guess I better turn that off. All right, so um, if we look at the file as generated, you can see here Reddit sentiment data JSON L. And now you can see that we have well formatted JSON L file system. What is the sentiment of the following text? Please respond positive, negative, neutral. User, family Mormon, never, have never tried to explain. They still stare puzzled from time to time. Blah, 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 blah. Role assistant content positive. So there you go. So and it does that for all the examples. And we've got a ton of them. Now that we have the examples, they've all been written to our JSON-L file, now we can begin the real fun. First things first, we always got to do our train test split so we can get some good, uh, good, good testing going on. So um, we get our out, uh, I don't know why it says output file name there. Wait a minute, what? Okay, well that's redundant. I've got some extra code that shouldn't be there, so let me get rid of that. Okay, so we got our helper function that's going to do the split. You remember this from before. This is not new. Uh, and then we actually need to uh, create the train test files, which is not here. All right, let me add that code in. Okay, all fixed up. Here we go. Let's go ahead then and get our train test split. Whoops, wrong file path. Ruh row. Let me give it the right file path. Which is this guy right here. Well, I guess I can just call it output file, right? So let's just do it that way. That should work. Train test split. All right, hang on a second. Let me uh, dial it in. Okay, this should work. So I've got the, uh, since the file name's in the same directory as everything else, this should work. Let's give it a shot. And away it goes. All right, so check it out. Our train size is 29,719, so we're doing 80 20 split, right? So 29,719, our test size is 7,430. Perfect. We got an 80 20 split. It gives us our names, uh, file path, Reddit sentiment data, Reddit, uh, train, Reddit sentiment data test. Even better. So now we want to upload these files and confirm they're uploaded. So we run this code. The files are uploaded and it gives us the file IDs. Very nice. So now the files are uploaded. Now we're ready to do our fine tuning job. So again, start a job using GPT-35 Turbo. We give it our train set file. We give it our test set file. We set everything else to auto. We give it a suffix of Reddit sentiment. Um, and then we add our integrations for uh, weights and biases. Reddit sentiment analysis, Reddit sentiment analysis run 0001, and a few other things that are thrown in for fun. You can change these up as you see fit, be my guest, but we'll go ahead and run with this. And then we print everything, fine tuning job created, model, status, and we're good to go. So uh, let's go ahead and run that. All right, good deal. So initial status is validating files. 
Now what we've got to do is run until the, we make sure the job is done. We've seen this a million times before as well. I'm going to go ahead. we got our helper function. Kind of make sure that we check it. Now this one's going to be a little different though. I modified the helper function to add seconds to wait. And the reason I did that is because this particular one will take a very, very long time. It can take, uh, it took an hour and some change uh, last time I ran it. So I've gone ahead and uh, I'm going to extract the job ID. We're going to start monitoring it. And then we're going to do a check fine tuning status. And we're just going to keep checking the status. And I'm having it do it every, not 240 seconds. I thought I changed that. I think I changed it to, uh, yeah, right now it says every four minutes. That is not what I wanted. Um, we're actually going to do a, a much longer session than that. So hang on, I'll, I'll change that up. I meant to change that. I don't know why it didn't get changed. Okay, I've changed it to every 10 minutes uh, because that's more appropriate because it may take it a while uh, to run. Now it's freaking out on date time. It's saying it doesn't like date time. Uh, it's possible that there was a problem there. Let me see if it freaks out. Uh, let me double check my uh, import. Okay, yeah, I'd forgotten uh, daytime, the import daytime uh, library. So I got them installed. Uh, I fixed the code, by the way. So when you get the code and you run it, you'll be fine. And I'm going to save that change. Hang on, let me save that. All right, it is saved. Okay, let's run this and let it do its thing for a while. And we should be in business. So it's going to be invalidating files for a while. We've got a lot of stuff in there, right? Remember, we have thousands this time. You guys are used to having just like 100, uh, and it goes pretty quick in like 10 minutes. This is thousands, so it's going to be a minute. Um, let me show you what I'm talking about real quick. Let me see if I can... Uh, yeah, here, I've got this up. Let me pull that up. I can just do... Me. Nope. Let's try it here. Nope, still not going to do it. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and head on over to our uh, OpenAI API. I'll go to my uh, dashboard. We'll look at our fine-tuning jobs. You can see this guy's trucking along. This is the guy we're looking at right here. So it's churning along, uh, and it's still in the validating files. So it's going to be a minute, uh, more than a minute, right? So I'll note the current time. Current time uh, is 11.19 a.m. Uh, it's trugging along. When we're done, I'll let you see the time here. You see it says one minute in, so I'll let you see that when it's done as well. So I'm going to pause till it's done. It's going to be a minute, and then we'll come back after it's done. Okay, we are done. It took 140 minutes, so you better be prepared to kick back and relax when you kick off this job because it is going to take a minute. Um, so, all right, so it's, it's done. We've got it. Now, what I decided to do, um, because I incremented every 10 minutes, I decided to go ahead and have a little fun with the uh, time codes here. And, um, yeah, okay. Uh, and then to, uh, to print it out, uh, print out the timestamps uh, in a little easier format for you. So we're going to do that. Uh-oh. No attribute UTC from timestamp. Okay. Now, hang on a second. Let me fix that. <clears throat> okay. I fixed it up. Um, so here we just print out the final job details, the status, created at, finished at. Notice these are um, Unix timestamps. Uh, and then the name of the model uh, that we created, uh, training file, validation file, train tokens. Now, because we often do this, I decided to go ahead and throw in the extra part where we format the Unix timestamps. In my case, I'm in central time zone. So I went ahead and added some code. And re-showed the created at and finished at so we get the more accurate how long it took. And you can see it basically took a little over two hours, right? From 615, uh, 0615 to 0829. Um, so that's where we're at on that one. Okay, so moving on. Uh, here we have um, get the final status of the fine-tuning job. So we're going to retrieve it again. Uh, spit this stuff back out. I'll go ahead and just do Unix times uh, this time again, but you, uh, now that you have the code, you can, of course, convert it any way you feel like. We'll go ahead and run that. And we're good to go. Uh, and then, uh, now that we've done all that, now we're ready to start playing with it. So this is the fine-tuned model that we wound up with, this guy right here. 
So now we're ready to start playing with it. First is evaluating the new model's performance. So we want to go to WMB and take a look at the metrics from WMB. So um, uh, we're going to do manual calculations later, later for fun, but we'll go ahead and go to WMB website and check its stuff out real quick. So I'm going to click on the link. Okay, let me pull this up. Let's see here. Hang on a second. Let me just grab this. Whoa, that is not what I wanted. All right, let me just head on over because I had one already up, I think. Yeah, here we go. So let me just head on over to WMB. Uh, we'll go to my projects. Here's a recent project, Reddit sentiment analysis fine-tuning. Here's the latest run right here. And we should be in good shape. It shows our accuracy, our old accuracy. Uh-oh, no, that is not showing the right thing. Hang on. Let's see what we're looking at here. All right, let me head back. Okay, this is 48 seconds ago. 51 seconds ago. This is a different thing. And this must be the one six hours ago. All right, this is the... This looks like the one I'm looking for right here. So you can see uh, quite a bit going on. No, that's run 001. Okay. Well, yeah, that, I think that's it, though. Yeah, that's run 001, so that's the right one. And so you can see here we've got uh, our uh, training loss. So training looks good, right? The training loss is going down. The full valid loss looks good. Um, we can see here the valid loss and the mean token accuracy. We get to 94% mean token accuracy, so I think we're looking pretty good here. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and on back to our code. And so we, uh, we went right to our project. We saw what it had done. We saw the metrics around it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and manually compute the metrics. They probably won't be as precise as what we just had, but I thought it'd be fun to go ahead and go through the motions and see what that looks like. So we're going to go ahead and run this. And it's going to calculate some metrics for us. It's going to process um, the rows like it did before for manual calculation. I'll pause while it does that. And then we'll get the, the manual metrics calculated. Okay, it is all done. It's, it's done 100 sample rows. Now we're going to go ahead and calculate the rough accuracy. We can see the rough accuracy is 87%. We're going to go ahead and log the accuracy and then note the accuracy improvement. So we can see that accuracy improvement, 45 percentage points. Relative improvement, 107.14%. So moderate, uh, model accuracy after fine tuning. And we do log this to WMB. So you can do manual logging if you want to, the way I'm doing it here. I give you the code for that. And you can do the automatic stuff. So let's note the difference here. <coughs> now that we've done it real quick, I want to go back and look at WMB uh, and the job. So there's a couple of things going on here I want to point out. Um, one of them is that um, I recorded in one project, in, in the project called Reddit Sentiment Analysis, in Run001 here, this guy right here, Run001, that's where I recorded the automated stuff that we did. And again, just kind of taking a look at it, you can see the token accuracy goes up, which is exactly what we want. The loss function goes down, which is also exactly what you want. And then the um, full valid loss is 0 0.10. So it is less than one. That is perfect. Uh, full valid mean token accuracy is 0.96. So we're at 96%. Um, again, looking at the valid loss, what you expect to see, you can see it spiking, but uh, essentially trending downward. And at the end, it's down quite a bit. What you also want to see is valid mean token accuracy going up, and that's exactly what happened here. So the loss went down, the accuracy went up, and we're in good shape. All right, so that was that. Now, having done that, on a different project, uh, if we go look at a, a different project on this one called Run Sentiment Analysis uh, FT, that's where I recorded the... Um, accuracy settings. We have the old accuracy here, and then we should have the new accuracy showing up in a different run, or maybe I showed it up in a different place here. Let me take a look. I may have, I may have gotten janky with it here. 
Mm, nope, it's not showing up yet. Okay, so let me go look at my projects real quick. It's in here somewhere, but I don't recall where I stuck it. Let's see this one. Mm, nope, okay. Well, there's my main analysis. So, yeah, all right, let me go back and take a peek. Hang on a second, I'll troubleshoot. Oh, I see what I did. I think I logged it, but I wanted to do a comparison table as well. So let me put that in as well. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, here I create a fine-tuned versus non-fine-tuned results comparison table. Let's go ahead and run that. Get all kinds of good metrics. Old model accuracy, new model accuracy. And it should generate a... Uh, should generate... Yeah, it's generated quite a bit here. All right, so now we've closed all the plot stuff. Everything's in there, so we should be good. Let's take a look now. <clears throat> okay, I figured what was going on. It, I'm a victim of the resolution here. It's killing me. But here, uh, you can see this is the media I generated, a, a model confusion matrix. I'll click on it. So this is what we did here. So it showed the amount of uh, true positives, neutral positives, and true negatives. Uh, this is called a confusion matrix. Uh, we've seen those before. And then, uh, and this, this resolution is just killing me. So that's what's going on. It's because I'm at, but you can see here now, here's where we have our charts. Relative improvement, 107. Accuracy improvement, uh, looks like 45. New model accuracy, 0.87. And then we've got unique sentiments. Old model accuracy, 0.42. So there it is. All right, so it's all in here. I just needed to collapse this. Don't worry, you won't have that problem because you'll be working at a resolution that isn't like this. I have to work at these resolutions to demo to you guys. Yours will be a lot easier to see. So sorry about that confusion, but we are good to go. Okay. Um, now, when we're all done, we want to go ahead and finish our WMB run because it is logging stuff as we speak. So we'll finish that out. Um, it'll give us a nice little summary. Uh, run history, run summary, accuracy improvement, 45, new model accuracy, 87, old accuracy, 42, relative improvement, 107, and again, new model, old model, total samples, unique sentiments, sentiments, and then it even gives us the link to where we can go see the results, so we can view the run, you can click on that, uh, and that is that, we are done, uh, that is the complete uh, first practical example I wanted to show you guys. So I'll leave it to you to play with it, but um, this is what you're essentially going to do in the real world. Um, you're going to get out there. You're going to create these things. You'll log them either manually. That's why I included the manually because it was in the article and I thought it was a neat thing to include or automatically, which we also did. And you're going to uh, decide where you know and how you want to do it uh, or maybe a combination of both. It's up to you. As you get more familiar with WMB, though, you'll find that you're going to put everything in WMB because it becomes the um, uh, the record, if you will, uh, the location of record for your experiment. So uh, that's why I'm considering doing a special on WMB because I think we need to do a deep dive on it. Uh, even I'm not super familiar with it as I want to be. So I think we may wind up doing that. But for now, we've got a good start. Hopefully you enjoyed this. This is Zane. I'll see you next time. All right, boys and girls, I think that's it. Yep, we are done. So hopefully you enjoyed all this good stuff around fine-tuning. We are done with the fine-tuning series at long last. And um, I'll probably do some kind of end cap. I haven't really decided yet on the whole series because technically this is the end of the whole API series. At this point, we've gone through every part of the API. Uh, I'm trying to decide if I want to do some catch-up stuff or not. I, I might, I might not. I really haven't decided yet. Uh, but if I decide to add some stuff, I definitely will. With that said, um, thank you so much for those who have managed to survive all these sessions. I really do appreciate it. Uh, keep uh, plugging away. Uh, I'd love to have your comments, your thoughts. Uh, hit that like and subscribe. And I'll tell you what, I will see you on the next one. Have a good one.